hi guys, it's Jana Mojo. Welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel. I hope you are having a wonderful day today. Today's story time is the craziest, scariest, fucking what the fuck story I have ever told here on this channel. And it is a long one. It is an incredibly long one. It is a story that is going to take place over months. I have so many things to say. It is so, so fucking crazy. And I had to wait to tell this story until I was safe, until I like could say everything and knew I wasn't gonna get in any trouble, until I didn't feel like my life was in danger. And I couldn't talk about it while it was all going on because it was too much. I didn't like want to die. And it's just terrible. It is absolutely fucking terrible and insane. And yeah, this is gonna be a really long story because there's no way to make it short. Like I'm gonna be telling stuff that has been happening over a span of like six months and it's yeah, but the title's not clickbait or anything like that. If you are here because of that, you are going to hear about that. So let's just get fucking started from the very, 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 very beginning. I love you. Thanks for watching. <laughs> So in November, I lived here in the house that I'm filming in right now with my parents. Yes, I'm back at my parents' house for a couple days and then I'm moving, but we'll, we'll get into all of that, okay? But the house that I first started filming in where the pictures were on the wall behind me and the bed and the door was fucking dirty and the OG Tana subscribers know exactly what I'm talking about. This video is a little bit geared more towards people who've been around a little longer because it'll make more sense, but if you're new, feel free to go back to the beginning and watch all the stalker videos and get up to here, but fuck, man. Fuck, man. <laughs> when I said in my first stalker story, like, I may die from this, in the moment of this story, I really was like, I may fucking actually fucking die from this, like, this is really honest and real of me to say, but when I was living with my parents in November and around that time, we were fighting a lot. It was me, my mom, and my dad, and we just fought a lot. And I, I feel like this story wouldn't make as much sense if I didn't say that. And it's it's hard to say. It's really real to say on this channel. But I mean, I'm not going to sit here and sugarcoat it and be like, I just wanted to move for no reason, blah, blah, blah. Like, families fight. I know a lot of you go through that, so I would rather keep it 100 as fuck. And tell you, I was fighting with my family a lot. It's not that I don't love them. Obviously, I'm sitting here in a house with them right now. I mean, I love them so much, but we just, we work better away from each other. We all get along really well in small doses, but we are very different people. And it just, it was too small of a space. We were just fighting all the time. We were saying things that we shouldn't be saying to each other. And we all really, really love each other at the end of the day. But I, we're just, we all agree that we're not meant to live together and it's a, it's a different situation but I mean I'm graduated from high school I graduated early I did online school I was self-sufficient making my own money paying for everything in my life I I didn't have any reason to be living at home anymore really and it was just making everyone dislike each other which is it's fucked it's it's it shouldn't be a thing you know what I mean in November I was just ready to move out you know what I mean it just yeah and I wanted to be out fast you know what I mean I, I didn't want to stay in this house any longer it just I wanted to be happy with my family and I wanted things to be better and I wanted my life to be completely perfectly happy and I wanted to really really focus on doing what I love which is YouTube I wanted to get the fuck out so I started looking for houses all the time and this was also in the time that my stalker was still very very prevalent in my life so when looking for a house I had to be very cautionate of safety and the house being upgraded and having security and all that good guard gated shit you know what I mean like I had to be really cautious of safety and at the time I was a little bit stubborn and ignorant in the sense that I did not want to live in an apartment or a condo I wanted to live in a house and now I look back and I'm like Tana you're a fucking idiot like you you don't need a house like you like you're one girl like you don't need a house but I guess in Vegas anyways the price of living in a house and the price of living in an apartment or condo are very 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 similar I'm talking a couple hundred dollar difference monthly so at the time I was in the mentality of I would get a lot better of a deal if I lived in a house than if I was living in an apartment, which is still very, very, very true. But on the other hand, I don't need that much space. So an apartment isn't as good of a deal, but like it's, it's smarter for me and I know that now, but I don't regret that at the time. Everything happens for a reason. This is all a part of the man upstairs motherfucking plan. I was supposed to do that, but I'll, I'll get into God's plan later because that, that does come into the part of the story where I almost fucking died. 
So, so I was looking everywhere for houses and before I found the house I moved into, I looked at about 10 or 15 houses and I had a very strict list of what I wanted and some of the things on the list were that where I lived was gated very well, that my house had a very good security system, that the neighborhood had patrolled security and security cameras, that the inside of my house was upgraded and modern and that not a lot of people had lived there before so that it wasn't... I don't know, I'm just, I'm weird about a lot of things because I've, I've gone through a lot with stalkers and people and shitty shit, so like, I was very, very meticulous and strict about those few things happening, you know what I mean? And so I looked at about 10 houses before I found this one, and every house was just shitty. Either the person renting it gave me weird vibes, or like, the house was dirty, or it was too big, or it was too far, or it was too much money, or it, the inside wasn't the way I wanted it to be, or the house was kind of rickety, and I felt like somebody could easily break in, or or there wasn't a guard gate or there wasn't a gate or you know no house was like right and there was no apartments that I could find that I wanted there was just nothing and so finally the house that I moved into came up on the market and I saw it and I was like okay I was looking through pictures of it online and it was really like bougie like pretty on the inside like nice crisp white walls very clean tile countertops island in the kitchen an office big master bathroom all the shit that I like wanted you know what I mean so I go out to tour this house and this was the first house out of 15 houses or so that I walked in and liked it and like could see myself living there and the landlord guy was very nice and when I say when I get on to talking about the landlord I'm not talking any shit whatsoever really really nice guy does his job well but when I was taking a tour of the house I explained to him that I only wanted to live somewhere if it was incredibly safe because of my stalker I didn't want like my address getting out or anything like that I don't think I'm like famous and my address is gonna get linked Angelina Jolie like blah 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 I don't think like that I'm just saying like I needed to be safe my stalker had just gone to jail like all that shit like I'll talk about that also in this video but anyways I just needed somewhere really really safe so I was explaining that to the landlord and I feel like he knew that I was a like a young naive person who had never lived in a house before and didn't know a lot about all of that and kind of made it seem a lot safer than it was basically the neighborhood where this house was was gated and he made it seem like the gate system was just amazing state-of-the-art intricate like I'm locked the fuck in there if you don't like know the gate code you are not getting in swiper no motherfucking swiping and that's really not true it was really just a gate with a code he said like oh you have to have a phone number you have to call the house blah 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 made it seem so much safer but in reality if you had the code you could get in it wasn't much safer and I didn't know that and he also there was security that patrolled the neighborhood and he made it seem like the security was just like the police and that they were armed and they were always patrolling and that they would be there faster than the police and all that shit and after I moved in that really wasn't true the security would only patrol for like one hour a day in broad fucking daylight when no one fucking needs security in broad fucking daylight like call the police in broad fucking daylight like you why does my hair do that? Like, okay. But really though, like, he just made it seem so much more security than it was. And so I was already pretty much sold. And the house ended up being like a seven to 10 minute walk from my best friend's house as well. And like that made it something more that I wanted as well because I see my best friend every single day. You guys know Isabella, she practically lives with me. Like we're together every day. So the fact that I could like literally walk down the street to her house, like, like, made it more like sugar-coated and the area that this house was in I'm not gonna say it but it is in a very 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 secluded part of Las Vegas if you live in Vegas it's in like the bougie part of Las Vegas it's in the nice part of Las Vegas it's at the top of a really long hill you have to drive really far to get out there and for some reason in my brain I thought that that meant safer because you had to drive 30 minutes from like this house where I live now like to get there that there were no other houses out by it and shit like that and like a, a lot of the people that live out there are like old people and I don't know when living out there that ended up making it a lot scarier not a lot safer knowing that it would take police 30 minutes to get there knowing that it would take an ambulance 30 minutes to get there knowing that like if I needed to drive into like my parents house or into town like I like the, the closest target Whole Foods Mall all that shit was 30 minutes from my house and yes it was annoying and an inconvenience on top of that but I guess I was under the impression that being that secluded would make me feel safer, but it really just made me feel more estranged or whatever, you know what I mean? 
but I, I got talked into it, I was under the impression that it was a lot safer than it was, I was near my best friend, it was the only modern house I could find, it was a good deal. The company also gave me my first month's rent completely free, I didn't have to pay anything, and I just want to say now looking back on that, if something seems too good to be true, it usually is, and that's a life lesson that I definitely learned in this situation, you know what I mean? But nonetheless, I was very, very, very excited, and I originally intended to live out there alone because I was going to have an office, I was going to have a guest bedroom, you know what I mean? Like, I was going to decorate it all nice and live there for a year or so. And everyone, I mean, obviously my best friend was excited because I was going to be her neighbor, but was kind of telling me, like, you really want to live that far out there? You really, you're just done looking like you want this house? Like, are you sure? Blah, blah, blah. Everyone else was apprehensive but me, and I, I I should have listened, but if you know me in real life, I am one of those people that learns by doing. I don't learn by anything anyone has ever told me, and I never, ever, ever have my whole life. I'm very stubborn, I'm very hard-headed, and I learn by making mistakes, and I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that that will make me one day an incredibly wise person with an insane story, and that's what life is about, but I mean, I don't learn from being told, so I, and when someone tells me not to do something, I want to do it a thousand times more. So when anyone kept telling me that, I was like, no, this is it, I, I'm moving, sorry. So I moved out into the house, and I talk about this a lot in videos, and people, a lot of people are like, Tana, you're crazy, and a lot of people say that they're the same way, but I pick up on the vibes very, very easily, and moving into there, after I started living there, I was getting bad vibes, like, just like sketchy, I didn't ever want to be alone out there, I was leaving and traveling and hanging out with my friends all the time, saying that it was only because I wanted to just leave and travel and hang out with my friends, but it was also because I didn't want to be out there alone anymore. And I didn't want to admit that to myself because I didn't want to say I'd made a mistake, I didn't want to say that maybe this wasn't for me, blah blah blah, but I just felt like something bad was going to happen. And it did and I was right, my vibes were right, but I mean I didn't know that at the time. So my mom came out there to live with me and she felt the same way about the house, but we both weren't knowing that the other person felt like that. We were both kind of fronting that we like didn't feel that way, if that makes sense, but that began to change. And I guess as I lived there longer and longer, it just got more and more creepy. I, I Something that you guys may not know is I never slept in my bedroom one time out there unless my boyfriend was there to sleep in the bed with me because my bedroom was on the bottom story and I just... I felt sketched out, I, I felt like someone was going to get in, I, I had bad vibes, so I slept upstairs in the loft on my couch every night, and I'm not complaining, I the couch is so comfortable, I'm actually getting rid of that couch and I have to give it to my dad and I feel so sad, I'm going to miss it, but I mean, anyways, I slept on the couch every night, I would watch my smart TV up there, the Wi-Fi was better up there because the motherfucking router was right there, I wasn't complaining, but I mean, like, I never slept in my own room because I was that sketched out to sleep in there alone, so if that, like, tells you anything, like, you know what I mean, that... And I guess I could explain some like just like weird things like at night coyotes would run around a lot up there like this area that it is so you would hear oh you would only hear them howling you would hear people out talking outside and then there would be no people and you know how like when you turn the air conditioning or the heater on in your house like the house will like pop really loud my house would do that when the air and the heat wouldn't come on but it would sound like someone was like throwing rocks at the like outside and it would only happen at night at like 2 a.m. or like 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. never when the sun was out, never in the day, never when the air conditioner came on, only at night and it was so loud that every time anyone heard it they'd be like, <gasps> like you know what I mean, like it would, get, it would get you off guard, you know? And it was like, I just, I would never go downstairs, it just, I was just really sketched out to be there. And so I, I started traveling, I was going to Reno, I was going to LA, like, I didn't want to be there. And my mom felt the same way. We both got to the point that our sleeping schedules were like, stay up at night and then sleep, like, go to bed at like 5 a.m. and then get up at like 2 p.m. because we wanted to sleep when it was like daylight because we were that sketched out. Do you get what I'm saying? And I'm not saying that we knew exactly what was sketchy, it just like, it was sketchy, you know what I mean? And like, other things just like, you guys know my Yorkie Dexter, I got him right before I moved in, like, he would constantly bark at nothing or like whenever I was home alone with just him, like he would walk around like something was like in the house, like looking for someone or like bark like at the door, like someone was at the door and then no one would be at the door. I got to the point where I would never even be there alone because it was so sketchy. Do you get what I'm saying? So now I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of backtrack, backstory on my stalker and then get into the second part of the story and all the like crazy shit that's been 
happening, okay? And why I moved out and why I'm moving. So, so about six months ago, somebody who'd been stalking me for pretty much my whole life went to jail. And I made videos about those. You can watch them. They're called My Creepy Stalker Story and I sent my stalker to jail. It's a real thing. But anyways, my stalker went to jail for about six months ago and I never talked about the logistics of it or gave a bunch of details for two reasons. First of all, three reasons actually. I didn't want to make somebody who was out to get me more mad I didn't know a crazy amount about the legal logistics of it and like all of that so I didn't want to talk about it like I knew and sound stupid because I didn't know. I still don't know a lot about it but I'm going to update you. And the reason why he went to jail was for a lot of other things along with stalking me. Basically we filed a police report for all of the crazy stuff he was doing to me like tapping into my phone and reading my texts and like following me. He followed my friend in a car. That's in all my videos below. You can like check all that out. Filed a police report and the police went to investigate him and when they did they got a warrant they went in his house and when they were in his house and going through his computers and all that they found like videos that he was filming of other girls naked he was stalking other girls like he was doing lots of illegal shit through the internet I guess they found like drugs all that kind of shit so basically yeah the police came to his house for something that I did regarding me and like that is why like I sent him to jail if I wouldn't have filed the report for the shit he was doing they would have never come to his house but the reason that he went to jail was like stalking was like underage pornography or filming people without their consent or like whatever that is when you film a naked underage girl like changing or something like that drugs like just a bunch of crazy shit is the reason why he went to jail so that's why I never had to like testify in court for anybody asking because it wasn't just me I did file like a a restraining order like thingy it's it's not technically a restraining order it's something else I don't even know what it's called but yeah I mean like he went to jail for a lot of reasons but still he was in jail about a month ago or so I, I don't know the exact date he got out of jail and the reason why I know that is not because anybody informed me of it shout out to the fucking Las Vegas police system but it's because he has a personal Twitter and his personal Twitter like he didn't tweet on it for the time that he was in jail and when he got out of jail he tweeted like I'm back bitches or like who wants to hang out HMU like some shit I don't even know and then I was never blocked on it and then he blocked me like on the Twitter so now I like couldn't see his tweets for whatever reason that may be I don't know but yeah I just I knew he was out of jail you know what I mean and so nothing really monumental was happening I got a few weird Instagram DMs he was trying to reach out to me like through friends and stuff like that but nothing to make a video about or like freak out about I just like was told to ignore it or whatever you know what I mean so yeah, he was out of jail and I really did not think twice about it. I had a restraining order, like I, I thought I was somewhere safe and yeah, I don't, I don't know. That's, that's all I really know to say about that portion of it. So now the past two weeks or so is the reason why I'm moving out. I'm going to explain all of that right now and just all the crazy shit. So this is where the story gets crazy. So like two and a half weeks ago, someone who lives in Las Vegas who knew me very briefly like through like we went to the same school, I don't even like know them at all, found my address somehow and leaked it. And it wasn't like a major leak, you couldn't find it now anywhere, it got taken down. But a lot of people in Las Vegas, in my hometown, were knowing my address and shouldn't and were like tweeting about it and stuff like that. And then I started getting people like ding dong ditching me all the time or like driving by my house and like taking pictures or like honking and then like I would call the security and they would take like an hour and a half to get to my house and like do nothing about it and like I get that there's not much you can do but it just it got to the point where the house was not only sketchy but I was starting to feel really unsafe in my own home like I was hearing so many noises people talking outside all the time and it's not that I'm like crazy and hearing things anyone who came over would hear them too or like my mom stuff like that there would just always be people outside and around when there there never were another thing that I want to say really quick that I should have been a red flag is I've had all these neighbors that would live around me because it was like I had like four people living close to me and they would all move out within a few months or they never lived there or the per and the only person who lived there in that house that I lived in before for me signed a one-year lease but then left after two months I don't know the reason or whatever that may be but usually if you break a lease it's for something fucking monumental I should have asked why it should have been a red flag but anyways I just started to feel unsafe so I started to kind of 
mildly look at new houses saying that it was only because someone leaked my address but it was also because I just I've always felt unsafe there and whatever and my mom was very very on board we decided we we're gonna move together we would look you know what I mean so I started looking at places with even higher security condos apartments something smaller something that was less big and spacious that I would feel so like like empty and alone in all the time not empty emotionally but I mean like the house was empty and like hearing noises and shit do you get what I'm saying and also people always ask me why I never furnished that room that I would film in sometimes downstairs and that was because I furnished my bedroom the guest room my mom's room and the upstairs loft which was like the main living room and after that I kind of stopped furnishing because in the back of my head I knew that I wanted to get out at some point and that if I moved I didn't want to have all this furniture and want to downsize and then not know where to put it like a lot of people were like you're just like a typical youtuber you're not furnishing your house like all these people do that blah 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 it wasn't that at all it was that I knew I wanted to get out I, I didn't feel safe and I didn't want to have fucking like seven rooms of furniture and then move to like a two-bedroom condo and not you know what I mean? Like not have enough furniture for it. So yeah. And so we start looking at condos and I find one that I absolutely love. And to everybody who asked me why I never did a house tour, that was, th this is the reason why. I didn't want to give the floor plan of my house out to the internet to where I felt unsafe. But I promise you right now where I'm moving, I feel a thousand times safer. I'll get into that. You will get a house tour very soon. But anyways, um, we started looking mildly. We got a tour of a place. I kind of thought I wanted to live somewhere, but I wasn't sure yet. I was like, I don't want to break this lease. I don't want to have to like leave. I don't, I don't know if this is like right. I feel like it's a rational decision, blah, blah, blah. But then really weird shit started happening to where now I was like, I got to get the fuck out. I'm not even going to go back there. So I'm going to start with the first weird thing, and that is the blinds. And this, this may not be that weird to you, but it, it is weird to me, okay? My house had a lot of windows with the kind of blinds that, like, you turn the, like, stick. Like, it's a stick, and you turn it like this, and then it makes the blinds close up or down. Like, so the sun could come in and out. Like, in the day, you twist it to open them, and in the nighttime, you close it to close them. And when you close blinds, you can close the blinds where the blinds face down or the blinds face up. And most people, when they close blinds for some reason, close the blinds facing up. But I meticulously, anally, to a routine, make sure that all of the blinds in my house are always closed downwards. And I did this here at my parents' house before I left. I did this at this house every day. I would open them up upwards and then I would close them downwards. Sue, so, Sue, so, so fucking meticulously. So n please don't leave me a comment being like, you could have done that, blah, blah, blah. Like, it's an accident. I did not do this. So I started closing my blinds at nighttime and then would wake up in the morning and all my blinds would be facing up. Even if I was home alone or even if my mom was there, she wasn't doing it. She didn't ever fuck with the blinds. It was like my meticulous thing. And I just was like, whatever. So then I would sometimes close them up and then wake up and they would be closed down. Like, like my blind, someone was doing that. Do you get what I'm saying? I don't know who or why or what, but like that was happening. And then the other thing would be is every time I would leave my house, I would turn my back light on, like the backyard's light so that like my house had a light on and like people didn't think no one was in it when I left. It's a common practice here in the United States. And I would come back and it would be off. And then one day my mom was like, every time I turn off the, the back light, I come home and it's, it's switched off. And it's not that the bulb was going out, like the switch was physically switched off. And I was like, that's so fucking weird. That happens to me too, like what the fuck? And so we both were like, whatever, it's just weird. You know what I mean? So we started kind of looking more to move or whatever and it was still up in the air. It wasn't for sure. And then this, this set of about three or four events happened where I was like, fuck this shit. So the first thing is I got a new dog named Lumen and I will be doing a video with her very soon. I filmed it and like it just, it wasn't good enough. So I'm going to film a better video with her very soon. But Lumen is such an awesome dog and she's kind of one of those dogs that like gets afraid of things like people she doesn't know. And she like would walk around the house all scared and just start shaking randomly or bark at the door just like Dexter did. And I'm like, okay, two dogs are fucking doing this now. It's not one. Like, this is weird, you know? So Lumen being scared was just kind of throwing me off even harder. Like I wanted to leave more. And then this happened. So I want to say it was like five nights ago or something like that. 
My mom keeps my other dog, Dexter, in this crate, like a big dog crate when she leaves because otherwise he'll just tear things up, he could hurt himself, whatever, you know what I mean? So like not for a long time, nothing like animal abuse called ASPCA shit, I just mean like if she's leaving to go to the gas station, she'll put him in the crate just like for his own safety, you know what I mean? And Dexter's one of those dogs that has attachment issues and like when people leave him he whines and cries and a way to fix that is with the crate to put something near, in, on, around the crate that smells like a person. Like that smells like my mom so that when he leaves he smells like her scent and isn't as scared. And the other thing is to make the crate dark so that the dog thinks it's like bedtime so that they get like tired, you know what I mean? So the other night my mom and I left to go eat. So we put Dexter in his crate and she covers his crate with this big robe of hers that she like sleeps in. So like the whole crate was covered by this robe so that he would smell her smell and then it would be dark for him so that he could go to sleep and not whine and cry, you know what I mean? So she covers the whole thing and then on top of the crate so that the like robe he can't like knock it off or anything like that, she put a pile of clothes on top of the crate and it was like a messy pile of towels and clothes that when she got home she was gonna fold or hang up and she put that on top of the crate and we left and I watched her do this with my own two eyes and so we come home about an hour later and we go back up to the crate to get Dexter out and this is where I was like bitch I am the fuck out I'm officially a bitch in a scary movie and I'm not gonna be that stupid fucking bitch that stays in her house I'm getting the fuck out I have a hair in my eye so we walk upstairs to get Dexter out of his crate and the robe that was placed over the crate was now lifted up but it wasn't lifted the way that a dog could do it and Lumen was downstairs in her pen so there was no way she could go up and do this. It was lifted the way a person would lift it. The robe was lifted up and folded over half of the crate. Do you get what I'm saying? So that Dexter could see out. And all of the stuff, the pile of clothes that was on top of the crate was taken and folded beautifully. I mean the way a housekeeper in a fucking La Quinta hotel would fold the fucking shit folded beautifully next to the crate. We both look at it and we're like, I have so many chills. We both look at it and we're like, fuck this shit, fuck that, we need to get the fuck out, but it's whatever. Like, you know what I mean? We're scared, but we're like, okay, just calm down, it's okay. Like, you know what I mean? My dad could have come and done this, Isabella could have come in and done it. So we call, my dad, we call Isabella, we're like, did you do this? They're like, no, we didn't do this, whatever. So we go to bed that night and we wake up the next day. And so the blinds that I folded down that night before we went to bed, like the blinds I turned down, we woke up and they were turned up again. And we were both kind of like, okay, we're used to this, but it's the last straw. Like I made sure to say out loud, like, okay, I'm turning the blinds down now. And they're not like self-turning. I asked the landlord, like, why do they do this? And he's like, I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't fucking know. I was just done at this point. At this point, I was pretty like... 98% sure I was gonna move out. I was still like, okay, maybe I can get a security camera or a, a fucking bodyguard to come here or call the security and tell them that something's up or whatever. I still, 2% of me was trying to just deal with it and stay there. So then that night, my mom has to go leave to go, I think she went to like hang out with her friends or something. And Bella and I decided we wanted to go see Zoolander 2 the other night. So we put Dexter in his crate and we put the robe over the crate and just for like, just to see if this would happen again, like we were both really scared, but we just wanted to see. We put another pile of clothes on top of the crate. And so we leave the house, we search it, we make sure no one's there, and we lock the doors and we both leave. And then I get home before my mom from my movie. And I don't even think to go check the crate right away. I sit down and I start filming a video. And so I'm filming my video and my mom gets home from wherever she went. I don't know, I think she went to like dinner with her friend. I really, I don't know. She gets home from wherever she was and on the way home she stopped at Target and got like a few things as well. So she gets home and I stop filming my video and I go out to the garage because I heard the garage open. And I'm like, hey, like how was your night or whatever? Like, and she's like, I went to Target. I'm, I need to put these groceries inside, okay? But first I'm gonna go take the trash to the end of the street. And I'm like, okay. So because like the way you take the trash out of where I live, you have to walk out like our large driveway and like to the end of the street to set the trash can like down there to get it picked up. I don't know. So I watch my mom do this with my own two eyes. She opens every single door of her car so we can get all the stuff out of from Target. She opens her trunk so we can get stuff out of the trunk. And she sets her keys on top of her car. And then I watch her do all of that. I'm talking to her. It's nothing like, she's not like doing anything weird. She's just like, you know what I mean? Like doing that, like, like a normal person would. And so I go back inside to start filming my, like finish filming my video. And she walks out to take the trash out. And she comes back in from taking the trash out. 
and I hear my mom scream at the top of her lungs and I'm like fuck so I get up and I run out there and I just think like someone scared her or there's a coyote or like logical fucking normal life reasons and she goes all of the doors of my car are closed and my keys are locked in my car sitting on the front seat. I, fuck, I have so many chills. I watched her open the doors. I watched her open the trunk. I watched her put the keys on top of the car. I watched her walk to the end of the street. And when she came back and they were all closed and they were locked in her car. Every single door was locked, everything. We're both freaking out. We both start like crying. Like we're trying to break into the car. And I think that whoever, whatever, what the fuck ever did this, thought that what they were doing by locking the keys in her car was gonna be stranding us out there for the night because it was now like late at night, you know what I mean? Like it was pretty late. They thought that the keys would be locked in the car till the morning, we would have to sleep there and that it would be like a good time to hurt us. That's what I personally think. But mama didn't raise no fool. I've seen too many God bless it scary movies. I wasn't leaving those keys locked in that car overnight, especially after all that weird shit had happened. So we call my dad before we're like gonna call a locksmith because those take a few hours and that would also be sketchy. My dad comes out and he takes a coat hanger and like gets the, the car unlocked because it's a Mercedes, it's not brand new, like it's it's like 2000 or something like that. So it's, it's easy to like get into. So we get the keys out, we take the groceries inside. We're both a little spooked, but my mom, we're like, whatever, we're tired, like blah, blah, blah. Like we're just blaming it on bullshit. And so we go upstairs to get Dexter out because he's barking like I've never heard him bark before, shaking, spazzing the fuck out. And we walk upstairs. We kind of forgot that the crate thing had happened. And we walk up to her room and we go to get him out of the crate. And the robe is folded on top of the crate the same way it was yesterday. And the stuff is beautifully folded next to the crate again, just the way it would be in a hotel. I mean, like, I know no one that can fold clothes this nicely, like into like triangles, like folded so like nice and neat like done and it was just so creepy so we both I look at her in that moment and I'm like I'm not living here anymore I'm moving the fuck out tonight this is the last time I will ever sleep set foot anything in this house so in that moment it was 11 p.m. I stopped filming my video I was gonna edit it I was gonna do whatever I go in my room and take all the clothes out of my closet throw them to the middle of my floor start throwing them in suitcases packing them packing the whole kitchen I'm not even kidding you I've never done something so fast in my life I put a cross around my neck and I'm holding the Bible I have chills I'm carrying this yellow Bible around my house like as I'm packing things singing like oh God God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, like walking around doing that because I'm so freaked the fuck out, I'm on the FaceTime with my boyfriend like crying my eyes out, packing my shit and I'm like I'm getting the fuck out and I'm a pretty religious person and I'm not gonna lie, moving out of that house made me sad, I, I felt a little bit like a failure, I felt like I knew people on the internet were gonna give me hate, I I didn't want to be that YouTuber that moves into a house and then moves out, but like if this shit was happening to you, you would move the fuck out as well, you know what I mean? So I was sad, but I am a really, really, really firm believer in God's plan and that every single thing in life happens because God wants it to happen for us and that sometimes you think something is so shitty, but it's really just so something better can come along and I, I really have faith in his plan. And, my mom just kept saying like I, I don't want to move out and I kept saying the same thing but then I'm like God wants us to move out and I I really I know if you're not religious you're laughing at me right now but like I felt in my heart and soul that God was telling me like you aren't safe here and your gut feeling was right and your fucking bad vibes were right and you slept on that couch every night because you were right and you need to get out as fast as you can and I just I felt it in my bones like just to the bottom of my core like um, just saying get out like get out get out get out get out get the fuck out you know what I mean so I pack up all of my shit and everything that I needed to like leave that night I left all the serious big stuff there and I came here to my parents' house, blew up an air mattress, my mom and I were sleeping on it. Yesterday and today, I went back there, I kept packing all my shit, I got all of my stuff out, and I signed a lease to a new place, and I'm finalizing it tomorrow. And I mean, that's basically the life update. I just, it was so weird. Even that night, like while I was packing, shit would just like, I would walk in a room and like walk back in, and like it just, I felt like shit was moved. I felt like 
it was different. And I don't know if the story is like stalker or something else. I'm not going to sit here and be like my paranormal story because I don't like, I believe in God. I believe in Jesus. I believe it was a, of an actual live person because like my address was leaked. My stalker was out of jail. So weird. And I, it makes me sad that something that I, I put a lot of work and time and money and effort into, I had to leave so soon. But I know that God is only planning bigger or better things for me. And I'm moving somewhere now that has the best security I could find in Las Vegas. I feel safe in it. I will be able to sleep in my room. I will be able to film a house tour. I will be able to furnish it. I won't have to travel to run away from a problem or a person or whatever it is that I'm so afraid of. My dogs like aren't scared to be there. You know what I mean? And I think that whoever was doing that to me really wanted me to be so sad that I'm moving out of somewhere that I love. But I know from the bottom of my heart that like I shouldn't be sad about this, that God wanted exactly what's happening in this moment for me to happen and that I'm only gonna move on to something that's gonna make me even happier. But yeah, to everybody asking like, are you moving, what's up, blah, 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 that is what I'm doing. So videos have been weird lately, that's why, because I've been going through so much shit, I've been scared to film in that house, I've been scared to be in that house, I didn't, I just didn't wanna be there. That's why I was filming in the kitchen because it was like the only room that was like close to like a phone and like that I could exit out of really quick and it was just really, really, really scary and I've never felt more scared for my life in my whole life or like someone was in the same house at me as me at all times unwanted and it makes me sad that I was told the security was higher than it was and it was just scary and I wanted to pretend like everything was perfectly fine and be super happy living there but it just it was so yeah I am moving in to a beautiful amazing exciting loft and I'm so fucking happy that I feel safe there and I feel happy and I can't wait to share every single step of that from you and feel protected from something sketchy and yeah so I don't have a climax I don't know exactly who it was or what it was but my shit was being moved it was really scary and yeah so I hope that no one is mad at me if you are there's nothing I can say I, I hope I don't receive comments that are like I can't believe you're already moving knew that would happen like you're just like every other youtuber blah 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 because like I my life was in danger I felt that my life was in danger I, I mean someone I just oh my god it was just the scariest thing of my whole life and I yeah so, um, I'll see you in my new loft and we're just starting a new chapter and I want it to be nothing from happiness and the feeling of safety and peace from here on out. So yes, I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for supporting me. Thank you so much for being there for me and you're amazing. So yes, um, more videos will be coming soon. I'm sorry if this setup sucks. I just don't have a setup here anymore. There's no furniture in that room I used to film in, film in upstairs. So I can't, I can't film there now. You know what I mean? So the next few videos may be filmed kind of weird but eventually they will be filmed beautifully and somewhere that I'm so happy so yeah I will talk to you guys in my next video and I love you so much bye